Hey everybody, this is Ted Forbes from The Art of Photography and welcome back to our Friday Q&A show. This is the second one we've done and if you're not familiar with the format here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to answer questions on Fridays and these will be a little bit shorter format of a video and if you have a question or discussion you want to start or ask, uh, you can leave a comment below this video and I will pick one for the next video. Now, I was actually very impressed with the range of questions that I got uh, after the first show. And so if you don't get picked for the next video, don't be too discouraged because I'll probably come back to those now and then. Um, also, I wanna say that some of the questions were kind of large in scope and not that I wouldn't answer them in this format, but I actually think they're worthy of having, you know, maybe our weekend episode that's a lot longer dedicated to them. Like I remember Barbara had asked me in there, you know, this about the subject of teaching photography to kids, which I think is great but I think there's more than about five minutes of material and so I would like to save that for a larger show. So don't get discouraged with that. Um, and you know, you guys can also talk in the comments and have discussions too and, and hopefully that'll you know, create some, some stuff for us as well. So anyway, our first question this week comes from Brian Haywood and Brian left a comment asking, uh, how do I feel about firms like Wonderful Machine and what are my feelings on, are they helping or hurting our industry of photography or the art of photography? And you know, I think that's an excellent question and I haven't talked a lot about the whole going pro topic in here, but we'll go ahead and go for it today. If you're not familiar with Wonderful Machine, what they do is they are a photo rep agency. And so they act as the middleman between getting photographers hooked up with clients. And of course they take a cut off of that. And it works pretty well in theory. And you know, what they will do is let's say a client would be maybe a magazine or something and they want to spread and they have something very specific, summertime, people at the swimming pool, whatever that is. And so they will go to wonderful machine, say this is what we need, this is what we're looking for, and they might say, hey, we've got a couple different photographers that might fit that bill, and they work and they figure out the best photographer for that client, and they will pair you together, and that's how it, the job works. Uh, this is nothing new, this has gone on since said the 70s really, with everything from graphic design and illustration to photography, you name it. And Agencies are not a bad thing. And I think if you're starting out, uh, they can be very beneficial to you because they are going to help you find work. And personally, I, as a creative individual and as a photographer, do not like to go look for my own clients. Um, it's a lot of work, a lot of networking, a lot of cold calling, especially if you're not really extroverted, that can be difficult. I am fairly extroverted and it's still difficult. It's just not something I enjoy. I want to spend my time making photographs. So right there, that is a reason to use a photo rep. Um, it, what will happen is, you know, a lot of them, there are others, Wonderful Machine just happens to be one of the big ones, but if you uh, are selected to work with them, I mean, they're not gonna just work with anybody, but you have to provide a portfolio, um, a very clear idea of what you do. Uh, sometimes they'll see potential. My friend Wade does a lot of stuff with Wonderful Machine. They will see potential in your work and they'll go ahead and help you with your portfolio and we need to see a little more of this. We think you could get these kinds of jobs. And so they do work, you know, pretty closely with you on that and the only problem that I've ever had with this is I think you get to a point where they have a huge stable of photographers and you know if you're trying to gain some success and some notoriety and let's say that your particular rep has 20 or 40 photographers that they represent you're only getting 1 20th or 1 40th of their time at best um, so it can be kind of difficult. Um, I don't think it really has an impact on our industry in terms of quality or the style of work that's being done. I actually think it probably helps it up more than anything. Uh, financially, it can be a little bit different. Uh, my personal feeling, and my dad was an illustrator when I grew up, and, and I remember real specifically in probably the late 70s, early 80s, when he made a cut from using representatives, period. And you know, he was doing illustration for major magazines. Um, he had enough connections at that point where he could go ahead and go forth with it, and I think you can do that still today. Um, you know, that you're gonna reach a point where having a rep really doesn't do a lot for you. However, I think when you're starting out, it is a great idea. And I don't think it, like I said, I don't think it hurts anything. Um, they have as much interest as you do as far as pricing structure, so it might have some impact on it, but I really don't think that much. I think stock photography has a, 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 a harsher impact on the value of a photograph today, and that's another topic for another day, and we can talk about that if you guys want me to, stuff like Getty and places like that, iStock Photo, et cetera. Uh, but anyway, I think that if you're starting out, I think things like Wonderful Machine and other agencies are great. Uh, sometimes you can find people locally. It depends on how big the city is you live in. I live in Dallas, which has had a lot of advertising work come through here because we're halfway between New York and LA and Chicago, so it kind of still fits in with some of the bigger markets. And so I know there are people in town actually that are photo reps 
that are just small and they rep like four or five people and that's it or maybe two or three people and you know so it just depends on what you're comfortable working with and who you trust um, you're probably going to get bigger name clients with somebody like wonderful machine or somebody like that and when you're starting out they're really helpful because they are going to help you get work they're going to bust your rear a little bit and uh, make you get your portfolio really tight and all that but it's also really good for you as a photographer too they're going to understand what they can sell to a client and they do take a cut of the the money that you're going to make off of a client but honestly for the fact that you don't it saves you all the time and hassle and worry about all getting clients and keeping that consistent it's worth it so anyway that's about all i have to say about uh, photography reps it's not a bad thing but i think too once you get more successful in your career you're going to get to a point where you probably are going to move beyond that and it's going to be more lucrative for you to not have a rep and less necessary. So anyway, I hope that helps answer the question, Brian. And once again, guys, this has been the Friday Q&A session and I will see you guys every Friday. Remember to subscribe to the channel. We do three shows a week, three different shows a week out of this channel. So on Wednesdays, we've got the photo threes. Today's Friday, we have Friday Q&A, and then on Sundays we have our regular longer format 20-30 minute episode of The Art of Photography proper. So anyway, once again, my name is Ted Forbes. I'll see you guys next time. Later.